What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to our video. Today, I'm doing another NASCAR Silly Season update where I'm going to recap everything that's happened so far throughout the 2024 to 2025 NASCAR Silly Season. So anyways, let's go ahead and let's jump straight into it. Let's begin by talking about Stuart Haas Racing. Now, Stuart Haas Racing has been the biggest talking point throughout the Silly Season so far. Because at the beginning of Silly Season, there were rumors, rumors they were only going to sell maybe one charter. Then Chatter began, they were looking to sell two charters at the end and now it's expected in the coming days and hours and probably by the time you're watching this is expected to be announced that Stuart Racing will likely sell all four charters at the end of this season and it will likely be they'll be shutting down their cup series program at the end of this year now it is still unclear if SHR will be operating in the Xfinity series there is still a chance of possibly the Stuart Racing could still operate in the NASCAR Xfinity Series next season, but there's also a good chance they're not going to show up. This could be the end for Tony Stewart and Gene Haas in the sport as we know it. Many are expecting all they're going to be informed some point later today, and if that does end up happening, we'll talk about it here. But Stuart Haas Racing is expected to sell all four charters at the end of this season, and I saw all their buildings, among other things, and likely be shutting down. The program is expected this is going to be announced sometime in the coming days. Let's now talk about Honda. Early in the season, there was a lot of chatter, rumors, rumors that Honda was very interested in joining NASCAR. Now, the earliest Honda could join the sport, if they were to join, was 2026. A big reason is because of the hybrid systems. NASCAR is looking to implement a hybrid system by the start of the 2026 season. And Honda and Hyundai, which we'll talk about later, the only way they come into sport right now is if there was a hybrid system in the sport. But Honda is very interested. There could be teams like Spire Motorsports, even Chip Ganassi Racing, that could be looking to take those avenues to get into the sport and move over to new manufacturers. But Honda is very interested in joining the sport. Now let's talk about Martin Truex Jr. Early in the season, there was a lot of chatter that Martin Truex Jr. was going to retire. But in a recent article with Jordan Bianchi, Jordan Bianchi stated that Martin Truex Jr. will likely be returning in 2025. But there's also a chance he could retire at the end of the season. Right now, it's 50-50, and we're not expecting an official decision from Martin Truex Jr. till later in the season. But Martin Truex Jr. is 50-50 right now. There's a chance he could retire, but there's a chance that Martin Truex Jr., could retire, return in 2025. Now let's talk about DJ Khaled. Now DJ Khaled was at this year's Daytona 500 and he has expressed interest in potentially joining NASCAR. We've seen a lot of celebrity owners like Michael Jordan and Pitbull come in in recent years and DJ Khaled's interested. We know Han is very interested in the sport. This could be a big avenue and key for DJ Khaled to join NASCAR if he was to join. Now let's talk about Daniel Suarez. Now Daniel Suarez, after one Atlanta Motor Speedway, it was reported that he likely would be returning to Trackhouse Racing in 2025. And it was stated very recently in a Jordan Bianchi article that Daniel Suarez will likely be returning to the team in 2025 as Daniel Suarez is close to signing an extension with Trackhouse Racing. It will very likely be announced in the not-so-distant future. And it's unclear how long the deal is going to be. But I imagine it will be either a one- or two-year deal for Daniel Suarez to remain at Trackhouse Racing. Now let's talk about Kurt Busch. Back in the early portion here around the Las Vegas weekend, Kurt Busch was teasing a potential return to NASCAR and NASCAR Cup Series competition. He is still, to my understanding, not been medically cleared to return to the sport at this given time, but Kurt is definitely interested in making a comeback and coming into the sport maybe in the future. I'd love to see him make a return. It sounds like he might be a little interested, but of course he still needs to be medically cleared, though he is enjoying life and was spotted at Monaco very, very recently. Now let's talk about Austin Dillon. There was a lot of rumors and chatter early in the season that Austin Dillon was potentially going to retire at the end of the year. But now it's very likely that Austin Dillon is going to be retiring anytime soon because Austin Dillon has signed a multi-year contract extension with Rich Schultz Racing. Now the deals were not in details were not officially enclosed, but Austin Dillon will probably at least be around in that three car at least for the next two or three seasons. Now let's talk about Andretti Global. Andretti Global is very interested in joining NASCAR. We know they're trying to get into Formula 1 as we speak. Congress has been getting involved very heavily with that. But the Andretti Group is looking to join NASCAR. They want to join the sport. They've been interested the last couple years. I think a big avenue for them to get in is going to be with the Spire Motorsports Organization. 
Now let's talk about RFK Racing. RFK Racing is among many organizations that are looking to expand in the NASCAR Cup Series. During a Series 12 hour weekend, they were spotted in the IMSA Pact and Bragasowski has stated they're looking to have a third car potentially in 2025. Now, they're going to obviously need to get a charter for that to happen, but charters are going to be a lot cheaper, especially with SHR likely selling all their charters. RFK could be getting another charter going to next year. I look for drivers like Haley Deegan, Riley Herbst, or Cole Custer to be candidates potentially for a seat at RFK Racing. Let's talk about Matt Benedetto. There was a lot of rumblings about Matt Benedetto's future, but it sounds like Matt Benedetto is interested in remaining with Viking Motorsports in 2025. We will run the rest of the year with Viking Motorsports in 2024. He really likes working with that team. I don't expect Matt Benedetto to be changing any organizations anytime too soon. I expect Matt Benedetto to stick around and stay with the Viking Motorsports group throughout the 2024 season and also likely in 2025. Let's move on to JTG Doherty Racing. About a month ago, it was reported that Kroger could be leaving JTG Doherty Racing at the end of the season and be headed over to JGR. And this would also mean that Tad and Jody Koschekter are expected to be leaving, which means there will be some new ownership coming in. Now, Gordon Smith is listed as a team owner, and Tad and Jody Koschekter have not spoken to the organization in recent years. Many are expecting a rebrand. It's, not a, no, it's unknown how, when that will be announced. But JTG Doherty will likely be getting a rebrand at some point in the 2025 season. Let's move on and talk about Junior Motorsports. Now, Junior Motorsports is one of the organizations that's looking to expand to the Cup Series in the future. They could just go after by bringing their team up fully to the Cup Series next year, or Dale Jr. has stated very recently in the last couple weeks that he'd be looking to get an ownership in some sort of way. Many have been wondering if Junior Motorsports ever make the jump up the Cup. There's a chance of possibly that it could happen as early as the next couple of years and couple seasons and could happen as early as this year as they're interested in joining the Cup Series like a Sammy Smith and Sam Mayer as potential candidates. Now let's talk about Chase Briscoe. With the likely possibility that SHR is going to sell everything at the end of the season, Chase Briscoe's future is very uncertain. But many people, including myself, are speculating that Chase Briscoe is probably going to the Wood Brothers in 2025. Harris to burn has been struggling immensely, and I expect that there's going to be a change coming at that organization here relatively soon. That is a technically a fourth Penske car. That car should be doing a lot better. Chase Briscoe more than likely will be headed to the Wood Brothers next year in 2025. Let's go into Australia and talking about Brody Kostecki. As Brody Kostecki will not be running in the Cup Series in 2024, but could return in 2025. He was set to make a couple select starts this year in the Cup Series with RCR, but Will Brown has taken those starts due to falling out with Peter Adelton from the Mobile X group. Brody's interested in coming to sport, and I think he'd love to join NASCAR in the not so distant future again. Speaking of Ricky Stenhouse Jr., it was announced a few weeks ago that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has signed a three-year extension with JTG Doherty Racing to continue driving the 47 car. Now, it's unclear if they're going to be Chevy, Toyota, or Ford going into the 2025 season, but they'll be making some moves, and Ricky will stay in the 47 car once again in 2025. Let's talk about Ryan Priest. Ryan Priest is expected to not be returning to Stuart Haas Racing in 2025, and his future is very uncertain currently at the moment. I'm expecting Ryan Priest to potentially be gone at the from the Cup Series altogether. He could be back in the Xfinity Series next year, but Ryan Priest will not be back with SHR as that team will likely be gone at the end of the season. Let's say in the Ford camp and talk about Haley Deegan. Her future is unknown past 2024. I do know that she has a multi-year deal with AM Racing, but there is a chance she could also be a free agent at the end of the season. She could go cup racing with RFK. That is certainly a possibility, but she also could save AM Racing. There's a chance she will stick around with the scene, though, in 2025. Let's now talk about Connor Zillich. Connor Zillich's future is very uncertain past 2024. We do know he's making select, some select Xfinity Series starts this season, and I believe he's going to run with Junior Motorsports potentially next year. He's been doing a very solid and really good job with their organization this year. I do believe that Connor Zillich will be driving for Junior Motorsports potentially full-time next year with Trackhouse Racing working really closely with them as well. Let's now talk about Hyundai. 
Like Honda, Hyundai's also <coughs> very interested in joining NASCAR. If Hyundai was to join in 2026, we could potentially have as many as five manufacturers in the 2026 season. Again, they're going to need some help for some organizations and teams. We could see some new organizations come from IMSA in the future if Hyundai was to join. But Hyundai is clearly and seriously interested in coming into the sport in 2026 if the hybrid system does come into place for NASCAR. Let's talk about Colleg Racing. There was a lot of rumors a couple weeks ago that Colleg Racing was looking to merge with Trackhouse Racing next year. But Chris Rice has denied those rumors in recent months that they are going to merge with Trackhouse Racing. Now, Colleg could sell a charter to Trackhouse Racing at the end of the year, but they could still be a two-car program. If Colleg Racing was really, really smart, they probably should sell a charter at the end of this year because their program has been struggling immensely so far in 2024, especially their Xfinity program. Speaking of Trackhouse Racing, they're one of the organizations that's looking to expand in 2025. They want to be a four-car team in 2025, but with the new charter negotiations and rumors that are going around, teams may only have three cars next year. Now, Shane Van Gisburn could go to another organization because Zane Smith will likely be committed with Trackhouse next season, but it's expected they're going to be making some moves. They're looking to be a four-car team if the charter agreements don't come in. Speaking of Shane Van Gisbergen, he could be full-time in the Cup Series in 2025. It's unclear if it will be with Trackhouse Racing or Colleg Racing. If Trackhouse is only a three-car team next year, I think Shane Van Gisbergen will be with Colleg Racing and Cup next season. Shane Van Gisbergen, in my opinion, is ready. He's been getting better and better as years progress has gone on. I think he deserves an opportunity to be in the Cup Series next season. Let's go back to Toyota and talk about Legacy Motor Club. They're another organization that is looking to expand. They've kind of fallen off the rumors about potentially buying a charter from a team like Stuart Haas Racing, but they're interested in expanding. You've got drivers like Corey Heim and Eric Almroll who are potential candidates and possibilities to make the move there. They're looking to expand. They could expand their organization in 2025. Let's stay with Toyota and talk about 2311 Racing. They're also looking to expand in 2025. They're one of the big organizations that's looking to get a charter from Stuart Haas Racing, which means they could be a three-car team in 2025. More than likely, they will have Corey Heim in that third seat if they do expand. They're not going to get Kurt Busch in that seat. They're not going to get Carl Edwards, more than likely. They're not going to get Eric Almirola, who we'll talk about in a second. So Corey Heim will be the driver. He's making a start with them in Nashville in the next couple of weeks. We are expecting that they will expand in 2025. Let's now talk about Front Row Motorsports. There are rumors about two weeks ago that Front Row Motorsports could be merging with Stuart Haas Racing in 2025. They could be a four-car team, but they're likely to be a three-car team in 2025. Josh Berry, Todd Gillen, and Cole Custer could be the drivers. Todd Gillen is very close to signing an extension. Josh Berry will likely be a package deal with Rodney Chillers. And Cole Custer more than likely will be driving a 34 car full-time in 2025, with this merger most likely taking place really, really soon. Speaking of former front row drivers, Michael McDowell announced about two weeks ago that he would be joining Spire Motorsports in 2025, driving the number 71 car. He'll be taking over for Zane Smith, who will go to Colleg, right, not Colleg, uh, Trackhouse Racing in the 2025 season. Michael McDowell is unclear if he'll bring Travis Mack over with him or his crew chief over there. It will see what ends up happening, but Michael McDowell will be headed over to Spire next season. Let's say with the four camp and talk about Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton is likely out of the Wood Brothers at the end of the season and most likely will be out of NASCAR potentially altogether, but he could also go to the Xfinity Series next season. He brings spots in funding. He does have funding from Dex Imaging, which I think a team would definitely take with no issues, but Harrison Burton is likely out of the Cup Series at the end of this year. Let's go back to Toyota and talk about Chandler Smith. He can be moving up in 2025 as he's currently a candidate for the 19 car if Mark Truex Jr. does end up retiring. Chandler Smith has been doing a solid job in the Xfinity Series this year. And if I was JGR, I think Chandler Smith would be a really good candidate to go with if they were to bring him up next season. Let's stay with Toyota and talk about Corey Heim. He could also be moving up in 2025 with either 20 through 11 Racing or Legacy Motor Club. More than likely, I think he goes over to 20 through 11 Racing next year. If he does move up, it would make a lot of sense. Corey's been doing a really, really good job over there. And I think he'll make a debut with them in Nashville. I expect Corey Heim to drive with them later this year. 
Let's go back to Ford and talk about Riley Hurts. He could also be moving up in 2025. If SHR shuts down their team altogether, Riley Hurts, I think, could be a candidate for Front Row Motorsports. He's got sponsorship from Monster Energy. He's been doing a solid job in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I think he definitely is a front runner in Canada to move up next year with another organization. Let's stay with SHR and talk about Cole Custer. It sounds like Cole Custer more than likely will be moving up to the Cup Series in 2025 and more than likely taking a 34 car for front row. This is a package deal with SHR. He's been rumored for months on end that he could be going to front row. I've heard it for the last couple months. It sounds like Cole Custer could be the front runner to go over to front row motorsports in 2025. Let's go back to Chevy and talk about Sammy Smith. Sammy Smith is another name that was mentioned by Bob Pox in an article a couple weeks ago that he could be moving up next season. He's got Pi Flying J as a sponsor, and there's some teams that are looking at Sammy Smith for next year, especially with the money. But he also could say <coughs> with Junior Motorsports in 2025. Let's say with Junior Motorsports and talk about Sam Mayer. Sam Mayer is another driver that teams are looking at as a potential candidate to move up next season. Sam Mayer has been doing a solid job in Xfinity. got five career Xfinity Series victories and has been getting better as the year has progressed. He's a good talent in my opinion. He could move up next year to a team like Junior Motorsports if they do go full time. Now let's talk about Ryan Truex. There's been talk and conversation about Ryan Truex's future past this year. There's a lot of people believe after he won at Dover that he should be full-time in the Xfinity Series next year. He's been doing a really good job over there in that 20 car. He's gotten two wins at Dover. I definitely think Ryan Truex is a front-runner in Canada to potentially be full-time with JGR next season. Let's go back to Chevrolet and talk about Carson Quaffle. Carson Quaffle could be full-time with Junior Motorsports next season. Carson Quavo has been doing an excellent and really, really good job with the organization in the select races he's ran. He's got a lot more races scheduled with them the rest of the year, and he's a very generational talent. I think Carson Quavo could be in the running to be full-time in the Xfinity Series next season with JRM. Let's say in Chevy and talk about Richard Childress Racing. They're one of the organizations that is currently after charter at this moment. They're looking to expand to a third car next year. They've been interested in having a third charter, and RCR is a major team in the running to pick up a charter for the 2025 season. They would love to expand, make a big move over there, and they'll look to that. Let's talk about the driver who could be going over to RCR next year, and that is Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson is being looked at by multiple different teams and organizations as a possible candidate to go over to a team like Rich Schultz Racing or Trackhouse. Most likely it'd be with Richard Schultz Racing. He's got connections to the Bass Pro Shops group. Also know of him also extending. I do believe he'll be going full-time with, with the RCR group in the 2025 season. Noah Grayson's been doing an excellent job in Cup this season. A lot of teams look at the talent that he has. He's not expected to go anywhere anytime soon. He'll likely be going over to Rich Schultz Racing next season with SHR shutting down their Cup Series program. Let's stay in the Chevrolet camp and talk about Carson Hosebar. Carson Osbar will likely be returning to Spire Motorsports in 2025, as it was announced a few weeks ago, but there's been speculation that Carson has been in the running for a track house seat next year. But with Dale Suarez, Rosh, and Zane Smith being under contract for next year, Carson Osbar is going to stick around more than likely with Spire Motorsports in the 77 car in the 2025 season. Let's go back to Ford and talk about Todd Gillen. It was poured by Jordan Bianchi that Todd Gillen is close to signing an extension with Front Row Motorsports. Todd Gillen's been doing a really good job with Front Row so far this season. He's looking to become the leader of the team. And it will probably be announced in the not so distant future that Todd Gillen will be signing an extension with FRM next season. Let's say with Ford and talk about Chris Buescher. It was announced about a week or two ago that Chris Buescher signed a multi-year contract extension with RFK Racing. Chris Buescher has done a really good job with RFK, been a championship contender the last year or so. He's got the sponsorship with him as well, and Brad Kozlowski really likes him quite a bit. Let's go back to Chevrolet and talk about Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch is interested in running the Indy 500 next year, just like Kyle Larson is also looking to run the Indy 500 next season. Rich Schultz has also said that he would definitely be happy if Kyle Busch ran it. So Kyle Busch could definitely run the Indy 500 next season. He's getting older in age, so this could be one of the last chances and opportunities he has if he does run the Indianapolis 500. Now let's talk about Carl Edwards. There's only speculation that Carl could return. And with him getting in the NASCAR of fame, I think it's safe to say that Carl Edwards is probably not going to be coming out of retirement. And Bob noted in a very interesting article that Carl Edwards is probably not planning to return to NASCAR. And here's why. 
commitment. Commitment is a big key thing, and Carl Lovers has no regrets. He did say that last year. I know many of us would love to see him come back and do a one-off return, but more than likely, Carl Lovers will probably not be making a return to the sport as he's living his own life currently at this moment. Let's go back to Toyota and talk about Eric Amarola. According to Jordan Bianchi, Eric Amarola could be a candidate for the 19 car if Mark Trickshner does end up retiring. Eric Armour has been a veteran to JGR. I know he got taken out of his seat this past week at Charlotte for Ty Gibbs. But Eric Armour has a lot of Cup Series experience. If they don't feel like Chandler Smith's ready and Mark Trick Jr. doesn't return, Eric Armour could be a front-running candidate to take over the 19 car next season. Let's stay with Toyota and talk about Bubba Walsh. According to Jordan Bianchi, Bubba Walsh is close to signing an extension with 2311 Racing. He's in the contract year for Bubba Wallace, but many, like myself, expect it, that he'll get his contract extension done really, really soon, as many big silly season moves are expected to happen quickly, and Bubba Wallace will likely sign the extension with 2311. Let's go back to Ford to talk about Justin Haley. More than likely, Justin Haley is going to be staying with Rick Ware Racing next season, but there is a chance he could go to RFK. With RFK looking to be a three-car team next season, Justin Haley is someone that's being looked at as a prime candidate for that third seat. He's been a really good job of Rick Ware with the candidacy as well. I think Justin Neely could be a front runner to go over to RFK next season. And finally, let's talk about Ryan Blaney and Scott McLaughlin. They're looking to do the double next year at Indianapolis. Ryan Blaney and Scott McLaughlin both run the Indy 500 and the Coca-Cola 600. They want to have four cars at Penske for that event. Obviously, Roger would have to make the decision for that to happen. But I would definitely love to see Ryan Blaney and Scott McLaughlin do it. I've been wanting Scott to come over to NASCAR for many, many years. We could see both those guys end up doing the Indy 500 next year, along with Kyle Busch potentially and Kyle Larson as well. So, that is going to be it for today's NASCAR Silly Season update. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please ask subscribe to the channel. The notifications on so if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my Patreon as well. Let's go to below that and comment your thoughts below on today's video. What are your thoughts about all the Silly Season stuff we talked about? Let me hear your thoughts in the comments below. If the SHR sub becomes official today, you will see a video on that. Then tomorrow, the channel will likely have a NASCAR news video along with the Truck Series race picks as well. If we don't have a news on SHR, we'll probably have the Truck race picks coming today. And we got a lot of great content. Remember, I'm going to be at Gateway this week, which is going to be really exciting for all of you. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode. And I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.